Welcome, everybody. Um, well, perhaps, I don't know, we're, let's start with the refuges and precepts. Um, so I suppose I will chant them and um, people uh, join in at home in your own way. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambudhassa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambudhassa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambudhassa. Mudhang saranangachami. Dhammang saranangachami. Sanghang saranangachami. Nutti yang pi budhang saranangachami. Nutti yang pi dhammang saranangachami. Dutti yang pi sanghang saranangachami. Tati yang pi budhang saranangachami. Tati yang pi dhammang saranangachami. Tati yang pi sanghang saranangachami. Panati pata viramani sikha padang sama diyami. Adina tatna viramani sikha padang sama diyami. Tatne su mi cha chara viramani sikha padang sama diyami. Musa wada viramani sikha padang sama diyami. Sura ma raya ma cha pamada tanna viramani sikha padang sama diyami. So I thought we might start with a very brief practice. Don't uh, 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 get into a particular posture, but just shut your eyes and bring to mind, recollect the, um, the feeling of the first time either you heard about the practice, doesn't have to be this practice, but the Dhamma, or you, um, you made the choice, the decision to walk on this path. Just bring that feeling to mind. and slowly finish. So we could say that that experience, that moment, um, sometimes it's very clear, for some people very clear, for some people, quite fuzzy. Um, but that moment is a little bit like uh, turning a, a, a tap on internally, turning it. Um, and just there's a little bit of a turn and a little bit of water flows. There's something, a kind of commitment happens, a kind of internal turning of the wheel, small. But that moment is a sort of description of the presence of the Ten Perfections. The Ten Perfections are, um, they're not like uh, most of, many of the lists we have, which describe, uh, uh, for example, the hindrances or the uh, jhana factors, which can describe what's going on in a particular practice. The Ten Perfections are more a, um, a picture of that to which we commit. Um, when we start the path. Um, and because we commit to them, there is a way in which we know them. What's interesting, therefore, so they map something, they, they show a very, it's a big picture. And it's a picture of perfecting, constantly perfecting. 
not it's the opposite of perfectionism it's got nothing to do with goals or um uh, uh targets to be assessed but rather of bringing to perfection qualities of being which when they're there together present and in full um uh, uh in full perfection then the mind of the buddha is present that is the mind of the buddha let me share my screen tell me can you see this yeah no is this working yeah so the ten perfections now they're very interesting the paramis they're given they are um uh, uh, the qualities perform um that are that are um demonstrated uh, or learnt through the various jataka tales um the tales of the previous lifetimes of the buddha um but you could say that from the point of view of that moment when one uh, makes the choice to go into the practice uh, they are the various uh, uh, jataka tales of one's own life um, the events, the moments, um, in which some understanding of the Ten Perfections or some feeling for them has taken one to the place where one makes the choice to start the practice. And so you could say that they, in terms of the, the, the mythology of Buddhism, you could say that they represent a kind of perfection in the mind of that being, the pre-Bodhisattva, the person who was to become the Bodhisattva, who in the presence of the previous Buddha, um, not necessarily uh, even uh, um, being very close, but just seeing something, took internally that vow um, to become free for the sake of all beings. And then the whole procedure of the Jataka tales, the many lifetimes, um, is, as it were, the perfection of those qualities, which come to being um, in fullness, in a kind of fullness, um, at the point at which he takes his final birth um, to become the Buddha. And of course, they will be fulfilled again at the point where he becomes enlightened. Um, so it's not as if they are ever finished until the final um, um, uh, um, uh, uh, enlightenment. But they're always in process of developing. Now, they are given, in, according to the commentaries, they, there are these characteristics for all of them. There are characteristics for them individually, but for all of them, what's interesting is that what underlies them really is compassion. The characteristics are the benefiting of others. Their function is to help others. And they manifest as the wish for the welfare of others, which can also be the wish for Buddhahood. And their proximate cause, the immediate trigger for any of them or for them altogether, is either they say great compassion or compassion and skillful means. And uh, that's actually a really, uh, that, well, it's a heartening and a nice place to be, to think of, uh, of compassion as the driver. Now we begin, let's begin at the beginning. Dana. Um, dana is the starting of the list. And um, dana normally, it means, uh, it's normally translated as giving generosity. But I think um, from this point of view, also one might think of um, a, an openness of heart coming full and fresh and spontaneously, wholeheartedly offering. Um, it, then they're defined, very interestingly, in these uh, three ways, each one of them having an internal and an external quality. Um, the giving of material things, the most uh, obvious, the, the, e the easiest, interestingly, also internal as well as external. The second one, the higher level, that's really interesting, Abhyaya Dana. Abhyaya, the Abhyaya Mudra, is the mudra where the Buddha stands with his um, uh, right hand raised uh, to banish fear. And the giving of fearlessness, that's actually a very high level of dharma. If you think of those situations where someone has said something or 
done something or been there for you which have shifted a pattern of the way one's life goes. Not necessarily in terms of dharma, could be in terms of a choice of, a, of, of career or um, uh, of, of a commitment to do something, an enterprise in life. What, what's happened is, is that faith has risen and that in connection with someone else's help is actually fearless, the, the abhyaya dana, the giving of a fearlessness. And uh, if ever one's experienced that, you, you don't forget that, you, you, it it's really touches one. And I think of that as, um, if you think of the first one, the giving of material things as what you might call um, um, the practice of self, the practice, practice for the benefit of self or the benefit of other selves, fearlessness is much deeper. It's practice for the benefit of others that they might themselves be free to do those things. And finally, Dhamma Dana, the giving of Dhamma, um, as the highest level, Dhamma um, in its own right. And Dhamma Dana is not really, I mean, it is obviously um, doing things for the, for, the, for the practice, giving meditation talks, or whatever, but really it's not that just as something you do, but it's uh, spontaneously. So when you see someone who um, teaches in a, who's, who's, who's just action, doesn't have to be specific, is spontaneously has that quality, that really is a, is a high level of uh, a dana as a perfection. Now, when dana, you think of dana as open-heartedness. That open-heartedness, until it is perfect, needs to be perfected. Actually, that's what they say in the, in the commentary on the sutta. Um, it requires to be perfect, to be perfected, it requires a touch of restraint. Sila, translated as virtue, or I, I think I prefer virtue as a translation, but in this case, it has two qualities, varita and karita, that is restraint and action. On the one hand, the avoidance of those things that are not virtuous. On the other hand, the performance of those things that are. And um, the quality of restraint alongside dana is extremely important because the open-heartedness of dana, when not perfect, can very easily give way to going too far, going a touch too far. And it's only in balance, perfection, with sila dana and sila together that the mastery of the sense sphere can take place that is to say anything one does in the world um, will be done right if there is a balance of dana and sila and it's because of that balance together that they can produce the possibility for something quite new something different nekamma nekamma translated as renunciation, but I think of it as uh, being in a place where you can look two ways. You can look back to the sense sphere, to dana, to the world of dana and sila, the world mastered by dana and sila, but you can also see and move away from the sense sphere. You can see what they call the subtle sense sphere uh, or subtle material sphere, um, jhana, the world of jhana, the world of uh, absorption and uh, of a uh, higher unified consciousness. So that in a sense, these three are describing our practice, our practice in the world, dana and sila, and our, um, our chance in a free way to move away from the world when it's at the right time, when it's suitable, um, into the world of absorption. Now, the way the sort of describe the way the um, commentary describes this is very interesting then, because just as dana and sila together have produced nekamma, so the balance of sila and nekamma offers the possibility for panya, wisdom. Um, and here I think the, uh, the the paramis can be seen as something very close to our own practice in terms of the breath. If you think of the breath as a gross material form, 
we, we, we take that and we treat it to attention through the union of mindfulness and concentration. We bring together those two qualities and in that something is distilled, a finer quality to the breath, a subtle material form, um, which uh, we know as the nimitta, the rising of the nimitta, which makes possible um, um, absorption. Um, now, in the same way, dharma has been refined, made subtle by the union of sila and nekamma. I wrote sila and samadhi, I see up there, um, uh, but nekamma to produce wisdom, to produce panya, a kind of seeing of a higher level. And we, what's interesting is that that's actually the famous pattern of the path, sila samadhi panya, a presentation of the whole path in terms of um, uh, uh, virtue in the in the world of the of the uh, sense sphere, leading to absorption, leading to wisdom. Um, here, um, dana is as it were dana and sila together, leading to nakama, which brings about panya. But the point is that there are six more perfections. Um, so, in a sense, what Panya has offers is not full realization, but a kind of seeing, an opening of the map. And it's the movement through the next ones that really is very, very interesting. So, I see the next tetrad, um, the next four, as being about purification. The union, in the same pattern as we've seen, the union of Panya and Nekamma um, brings about a kind of vigor, virya, the vigor to see things through, to push beyond, um, well, to push forward as a perfection, beyond ordinary vigor. And that is a sort of subtle distillation of sila. Um, that quality of sila, of restraint and action, um, um, more subtle and also more um, energized, sharper, laser-like in virya. Now the union of panya and virya, of wisdom and vigor, very interestingly gives rise to kanti. Kanti translated, sometimes translated as patience, although uh, in English the word sometimes has a slightly irritable quality or um, techy quality, which I think is, which is quite wrong. So it's Kanti's acceptance of what is. Um, and uh, they say that its proximate cause is seeing things as they really are. So Kanti, you see what there is, and actually because of the basis of wisdom and vigor, you don't turn away, you simply take it on board. Very hard, um, very profound. If you think of the things about, one thinks of the things about oneself that one doesn't like or spends most of one's life running away from, that is what Kanti accepts. And that is a subtle distillation of the quality of Nikamma. Um, of um, renunciation. Um, since renunciation is not turning away from something to reject it, it actually, um, uh, it in a certain sense also encompasses it, but isn't um, subject to it. Now, as we proceed up the list, the union of virya, that is the vigor that takes things right to their fruition, and of kanti, which is the acceptance of things as they are, gives rise to the seventh of the uh, paramis, satcha, truth or being true to what is, uh, and its proximate cause is given as honesty. And here again, there is a refinement. So panya sees, there's a quality of seeing, through the refinement of virya and kanti, panya 
become such a, a quality of being. Um, beyond seeing truth to being there. That's a very interesting, very profound process. Um, a kind of realization in the fourth, in the, in the um, second group of four within this list. And it's really only with uh, the rising of Satcha and the union of Satcha, which is to be true to what one is and who one is, and Kanti, which is the acceptance of what is and of who one is, can Aditana arise. And Aditana is the resolve, um, that resolve of the Buddha to sit under the tree until, uh, to be un unshifted until awakening comes. And again, you can see that that is a distillation of virya. Virya, the quality of, um, of vigor, of pushing through, becomes a, an unshakable resolve. But it's an unshakable resolve because all the edges, the crumbs, the bits that haven't been fully taken on board, the mess of what it is to be a karmic being has been accepted, taken on board in Kanti and Satcha. So the tetrad, second tetrad, Virya Kanti Satcha Aditana, implies the move from what you might call pure uh, seeing um, in Panya to the purification of what is seen um, and to resting in being without flinching, to resting in being itself without flinching. Um, now, what's interesting is that such a and Aditana together, that is to say, truth and resolve, uh, soften to metta, to loving kindness. Now, perhaps that's wrong word, soften, because uh, uh, in, in being able to hold to loving kindness through thick and thin, that requires quite a lot of Aditana, um, especially if, um, if it's difficult to find. But here you can see that metta, loving kindness, is again the distillation of that quality of kanti. Kanti acceptance, um, acceptance of whatever there is through truth and resolve becomes a kind of universal loving kindness, both internal and external, all of them internal and external, like the way we're taught to practice loving kindness. And so, finally, the union of Aditana and Metta gives rise to equanimity, Upeka, the tenth of the perfections. And the proximate cause is really interesting. It's seeing that all, all beings inherit their own karmas. So the quality of Upeka is that there is a very deep understanding. It's an understanding actually built on the edifice of the 10 perfections themselves, that um, whatever happens, whatever is out there in the world, um, it is the fruit of something. Um, intervention can be, is possible, but is limited. You can't change kammas. Um, so there is an equanimity. There has to be a kind of equanimity. And it is the distillation of satcha, the distillation of the quality of truth, through, on the one hand, resolve, and on the other hand, loving kindness. And that form of looking at this gives this pattern, interesting way of drawing them. So you can see I've, drawn, I've, I've done the, um, the connection so that you can see the, um, the way they're linked, but it gives you, as it were, a spine, a central spine of four qualities, dana, panya, satcha, upeka, um, giving wisdom, truth, and equanimity, and two arms to this being. One arm is the arm of sila, virtue, vigor, 
Virya and Aditana resolve. Um, the other arm, Nikamma, renunciation, Kanti, acceptance, metta, loving kindness. And it is in a sense the building or creating of that being that is um, what we're trying to do, but not in any one practice, but as the pattern of our lives, the pattern of the practice. Um, and in until the final attainment, um, Upeka, as it were, returns to Dana and the circle continues. Um, but it is a virtuous circle as it goes round. Um, and so as you can see, these follow um, this, uh, this treatise by uh, Dhammapala in the fifth century, or possibly the sixth century, writing in uh, Tamil Nadu, um, if anyone's interested in that. So that picture of the 10 perfections, um, and we could discuss any details later, um, but I think at this point, should we practice? So we practice not for a very long time, but find a posture. And remember that when the, at each point of the Buddha's passage of um, his, his becoming a Bodhisattva and then his movement to his last lifetime, there is, as it were, a coming to, together of the 10 perfections. So begin the practice by returning to that feeling when you first heard about um, the path, path to some kind of freedom, or when you determined upon going on it. And bring that to mind. And now begin the practice with the longest of counting.
change to the longest of following. change to the longest of touching.
change to the longest of settling. change to the longer of settling. change to the shorter of settling.
change to the shortest of settling. We've given ourselves the gift of the practice and of the breath, the first level of dana. Turn the mind now to give yourself the gift of fearlessness, the second level. and just let the Dhamma whatever is happen, the third level. return to the shortest of settling. Return to the shorter of settling. Return to the longer of settling. Return to the longest of settling.
Return to the longest of touching. Return to the longest of following. Return to the longest of counting. and slowly finish. So if anyone would uh, like to say anything, um, it's difficult because I can't see everyone on my screen. So I think people just have to speak. Otherwise one is jumping through. Nicola wants to say something. I think you'll have to unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. That was uh, uh, really, yeah, really benefited from that. Um, I was just wondering if you could give an example of an act of fearlessness uh, with relation to the talk. Um, I think that if you, uh, any, anything, anything that happens that gives one faith, I think faith goes with a kind of fearlessness. Um, and so that's how I, how, how I see it functioning. Um, uh, and it, 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 I mean, it can be quite grand, but it can be very simple. Um, but I think it's so often, um, well, it's interesting actually, because those points at which there is fear, um, to, just to go into something a little bit more unknown, are actually the points at which, um, just that m touch of dana sh shift a lot. So there's the, it's um, so if the, in a certain sense you could put it the other way. The the if you could if one could be mindful of the rising fear or on on a, that subtle level, um, uh, that's actually a, a great opportunity. Um, to, if one can then rest in the faith of the practice to, to turn something. Yeah. Yes, that, that makes sense to me. <laughs> hey, the, um, what you were saying just now in relation to um, Abayadana, the fearlessness, um, made me think about the, the process of developing the paramis, um, which um, of course, in, in one sense, one could look at them in a linear fashion in the way that you describe, but in terms of actually the way that they develop, you can also think of them as a sort of circularity. Um, and, and in that sense, the way you were describing Dana then, in a sense, brought out the sort of meta element of that and, and in that sense linked the end and the beginning. Yeah. And in fact, if you do it according to... I, di I stopped at... It stopped at Upeka, but if you, uh, but that's that's only where the Buddha stops. Everybody else has to go on round, and uh, keep going on round, 
And um, so then it's really interesting, Upeka, uh, if you think of it as the fruition of the previous set, set Upeka is very related to um, Aditana, is actually the root underneath, purified. So that's really interesting. Uh, ex Opeka has resolve, deep resolve in it, purified by, as exactly as you say, uh, by, um, uh, no, it's about, no, sorry, it's, pure, it's, it's um, Aditana and um, Meta are the purifying factors. Um, uh, uh, and the, uh, wait a minute, no, not, <laughs> I'm all confused. It's, we're talking about Dana. Um, so it's between Opeka and Meta, and, it Adita and Aditana is its root. Aditana is um, uh, resolve is what you need for generosity, purified by a loving kindness and equanimity. It's very difficult to do if you haven't got the list because <laughs> you get lost. But yeah, it's, no, it, it, I think it's really, um, really interesting that actually, right. that link. Yeah. Thank you. So you're quite right. And it goes on with the others, with Nekama and, um, and, and, and Sila. What I, all I was, is it one was, it's just an observation really, that um, when he did the practice, also it's almost like a natural expression of the way you put it, the second and then the third stage. It felt like the natural expression of all of that is actually a, a certain kind of non-self, but it seems to naturally therefore be a kind of, automatic purification that goes on which which actually when it one allows it to go there fully then then there is it, it isn't based around personality uh, in a funny sort of way although in daily life I suppose a lot of them you're working with that constantly the other thing I wanted to say was I, I really like the way you mapped it out to be that that very interesting picture um, diagram you set it out because it's almost like you you've almost like got a cause and effect and other it going up the middle as well you've got a tree there haven't you and it, it's so uh, and um and it, i thought it's a very helpful way of looking at it and working with it actually so that you can actually um consciously help embed those qualities of meta through all the others on that list, you know, so I, I'm not quite feeling very meta-ish today, but maybe if I sort of do a bit of exercise, a bit of nekama and sort of just actually turn away from the anger and hatred a bit, and at least I can probably do that a bit, then mm. you, know, you can use the other qualities, you can play, it leads to quite a lot of um, playing. <laughs> so, so that's very good, thank you, yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's interesting what you say, of course, the, 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 the tree thing, it does, it is strikingly kind of, you know, there's a touch of what might look Kabbalistic, or there's a touch actually of Gurdjieff's Law of Three. Um, and um, that's really striking because it's not imposed on this, it is actually there in the, in the, in the commentary. Um, so, uh, 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 you, you know, that's a, that's a really intriguing aspect of this group. Uh, 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 this group of teachings that they, you know, it's there in the in the old Pali tradition as well. Yes, I guess it's not a coincidence that if you look at this this uh, diagram you you uh, made, that on the left hand side side there's all things that are a bit with action, and the right hand side they're more like passive passive things. Okay, let's put it back. Um, yes, of course you could draw it the other way. So you could, because it depends on how you do the arrow. I chose to do it uh, this way, um, but you could do it the other way. But you're you're right. You've got um, well. I don't know if active and passive is exactly the right word. No, no, no. But you. But I'm, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I mean. I, I think that's right. There's a. There's a. Um, that they, there is a link, that, and, and that's why uh, there's something really powerful about this. There is this subtle linkage. Yes. Um, and also actually down the center, um, which is why then you see that to put Dharma as the beginning, the beginning of everything in 
um, in the practice so important. You've got to give wholeheartedly because actually that's the line of, of, of Panya Satcho um, it, So it, yeah, it's very interesting that. Yes, thank you. <laughs> that was all. <laughs> Run. Yes. Um, yes, I wonder if you could say a little bit more. Um, there's a very, you said something really interesting around karma. Mm. And you said that um, our karmas are our karmas. There's <laughs> sort of nothing we can do about that. And I, I want, and you, I think you were talking about it in relationship to Satcha. And I just wondered if you could say a little bit more about what that facing or looking to, how it changes something. Mm -hmm. Although maybe those karmas cannot. They are there, but mm. what's the change that comes? Mm. It's well, it's in relation actually to Opeka, because it's the it's the it's really that to me has always been prof, struck me as very profound, and it goes with the chant of the spreading of the divine abidings, where you get to Opeka, and it's all about karma, um, and uh, there just has to be. A willing, I mean, it really is the, it's the fruition of the such a, a canty root things. There has to be that acceptance of karmas being karmas. Um, but, but you are right that if you, if uh, instead of fighting it or um, finding endless ways to fiddle around, the, um, if there's a kind of straightness or a straight line with it, then it isn't the same. And I, you know, the, the story of Mogalana, who's after all, as about as enlightened as you can be, but who cannot avoid the death that he must pay for his karmas, uh, which is to be captured by these bandits and cut up to pieces, because once and however many eons before, um, this being had killed his parents. Um, so that karma had to be paid off, even though uh, uh, there was no trick Mogulagana couldn't play. I mean, you know, he's the one who could, you know, turn himself into anything. Um, and that's really quite an interesting, I mean, it's interesting that these, th these things are thought with in this mythological kind of pattern. They're much less um, um, uh, 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 sort of um, analytic actually than some of the other lists that we have. Um, but even, you know, even Mogolana, um, and yet at the, at the point after which, after he's cut up, then he can go through the eight jhanas and out. <laughs> so, um, you know, it wasn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Yes. Thank you so much for that. Um, so the, I'm, I'm in, in your diagram. There's a, there's a kind of there's a there are four qualities that don't quite go in a path in your tree, but they seem very similar to me. And I wondered, are they kind of deepened versions of the same thing, or am I putting things that don't belong together together? So they're renunciation, acceptance, being true to, and equanimity. Um, kind of almost in loose English, you'd almost take all of those four things to be kind of synonymous with one another in one, if you're, if you're being pretty loose. So I wondered, is, is that right? Are, the, are those kind of deepenings of the very same quality or, or are they actually, that's too simple? Um, well, none of, you couldn't say they're deepenings of the same quality, but you could say that um, uh, because all in fact are interrelated, um, there are there are there it, there are aspects of each in the other if you see what I mean, or in the because each is so dana. I, I mean, I put the list back up, but dana is perfected by sila. That's how, actually how it says in the commentary, and so on. Sila is perfected by nakama. So that mm -hmm. means that they are not 
unlinked. Mm -hmm. um, so the ones you specifically mentioned were renunciation, acceptance, satcha, being true to, and equanimity. Yeah. And you, it's interesting you see those as, as, as connected. Um, the, I do think, um, well, Kanti is acceptance, is acceptance of, um, of what is, but Satcha is actually being in there. There is a, there, so in that sense, there's a, there is an intensification, mm. um, I think. Um, equanimity is just be, being with it all, without it. So then again, you could see that's a, a kind of um, um, uh, uh, connection. And actually, if you were to continue the list round, if you if to, if you took equanimity as the equanimity is actually the um, uh, the fourth the, the first point, dana and sila between them bring you nekamma. So you could argue that um, in renunciation in the in it, so if you call it, uh, renunciation jhana, let's say the move from the sense sphere outside the sense sphere, actually there's a touch of equanimity. There's a touch of some kind of acceptance that. Um, uh, that, that there will never be full, there will never be fulfillment in the sense sphere. There's a in there's some equanimity in that movement. So you're right again to see the link there. Um, now, so you could see them as intensifications, but one of the things that's interesting is that they intensify through. Uh, these other connections, like for example, the the, the you haven't cited anyone on the on, on the left hand side, um, uh, virtue, vigor, resolve, and they they are in a sense equally connected. And part of the way I think is that uh, we see things clearly. Sometimes we see things clearly, the things that we're good at, the things that we're close to. Sometimes we see the ones that we uh, the opposite, the ones that we need whether it's at any one time or, um, or, or through, through, through a lifetime. So in another sense, this is a list that is about balancing out the skillful to make that full body of the, of the Buddha in, in oneself, to build the Buddha in oneself. Thanks. you said that the sort of underlying um, <clears throat> that um, underlying the whole list was compassion um, because one one of the or, or perhaps two of the things about compassion are that you kind of fully open yourself to feeling in the presence of suffering but it then leads to action um, and looking at those two arms you could say <coughs> that the right arm was in different ways <coughs> fully opening oneself to feeling and that the left arm was to do with action it's just a, a, a thought yeah no that's great i think that's great um, um and I, I, it may be, I've not um, looked at this. It, uh, I, I did notice this with Sila, where it's divided, virtue divided between two sides. On the one side, um, restraint. On the other side, action. And it may be that all of them are, um, I, I would have to go back and look at the commentary, but it may be that all of them are, in fact, um, have both sides on some level. Um, uh, they both, they all have an inner and an outer, certainly, or an, or an in, internal and external. Um, I think, I think, I think that's quite right. I also think, I mean, I think you're, it's really interesting, the compassion thing. The, the, what's normally said is that this list is developed, this whole uh, teaching is developed um, in response to the rise of the Mahayana. So it's the Theravada's um, de development of thinking about the Bodhisattva and thinking about um, those qualities. Um, so that's the historical kind of context they give. And um, it's certainly developed in the same part of India as a lot of the Mahayana, a lot of Mahayana thinking um, uh, about the Bodhisattva path. Um, so uh, again, that 
says something about the presence of compassion as part of um, uh, uh, as part of this teaching. <laughs> but it's a wonderful. I wondered if you could just say something more about the connection between. Full to talk. Thank you so much. <laughs> the connection between panya and virya, which you describe as vigor. Yeah. Um, just go back to the. Otherwise, I found myself getting them all confused. Um, so, well, then, you see, it's very interesting. So you get the four, first four, and the first four is, you know, it's kind of Sila Samadhi Panya, and you're done. Um, and yet, it's not done. There's a whole lot more. That's really interesting. Um, so what does this combination of Nekama, which is, after all, going into a different quality of a different kind, well, they say it's a subtle material, um, or unified mind, and the wisdom that arises, what does that, in, and that is, now this isn't the only form of virya, because there's virya, obviously, um, among the faculties, which would be present at different points, but this form of virya uh, is, um, they describe it, uh, there, there's a, the, 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 the uh, Jataka tale for this, uh, Virya is where the Buddha, um, he, I can't, he's a sailor or, or whatever, he's in a ship, he falls into the sea and he is swimming and swimming and swimming. It's got that he's got to save himself. He's swimming um, until he can't any more swim. And at that point, the goddess descends and saves him. So the quality of Virya there is a kind of um, willingness to carry on not just to the end, but beyond the end. As far as you could possibly go, everything is thrown into it. But there's also a quality of a kind of relief that comes. Some opening out that it's not just in one's own hands. That's again, it's a quite interesting double quality. Um, so that's the virya that follows Panya. I don't know if that's... Is that helpful? No, that's helpful. Thank you very much. Let's let's finish with the blessing. Bhavu tu sabha mangalang rakam tu sabha devata sabha buddha no bawina sadha soti bawang tu te. Bahawa to Saba Mangalang Rakam to Saba Dewata Sabha Dhamma Nusa Bawena Sadha Soti Bawan to Te Bahawa to Saba Mangalang Rakam to Saba Dewata Saba Sankanu Bawena Sadha Soti Bawan to Te God is God. Thank you.